In these problems, we are given a part of a certain number, a part of a whole, and asked to figure out what the whole is, what the whole number is. In this first question, it says there were five cracked jars in the box. This was one-third the total number of jars in the box. How many jars were in the box? So if you think about it, there are five cracked jars. One, two, three, four, five, and these are all cracked. And that's one third. Well, then there's two thirds more, more just like that. Here's another third and another third. There, one third of the jars are cracked here. And we have a total of 3 times 5, 15. So you could get the answer to this one just sort of visualizing it, drawing a picture like that. I want to show you a method of using algebra to figure this out. So there were five cracked jars in the box. This is one third of the total number. I've mentioned before that of in math problems is almost always multiplication. And we have a one-third here, so it's one-third of or multiplied by the total number of jars. Well, that's the thing we're trying to find. We don't know that. That's the unknown. So I'm going to call that x. But we do know one more thing is that one-third of the total number is five. There were five cracked jars. So now we have an algebra formula, and we can solve for x and x is going to be that total number of jars. Well, how do we solve this? To solve any you know, algebra problem like this, you want to get x completely alone, get rid of all the other numbers that have um, to do with x on this side and have all the numbers on this side of the equation. Well, what's happening here is that x is multiplied by one-third. And so we want to undo multiplying by one-third. So we could divide both sides by one-third. Well, dividing by one-third is the same thing as multiplying by three. And it, you might, that might come clear if you, if you think about multiplying this side by three. The threes here would cancel, and you'd just get one times x, which is x. So that side is going to be x after I multiply it by three. The rules of algebra say I have to do the same thing to the other side of the equal sign. So 5 times 3 equals 15. And you can see we came up with just the same answer here as we did here drawing it out. The, knowing the algebra way of solving this equation makes other equations or other problems like this a lot easier to solve because sometimes the numbers aren't as simple as in that first problem. Let's look at another one. Tyler needed 40 inches of string for his project. He used two-fifths, that's supposed to be two-fifths, of a full spool of string how many inches of string were on the full spool. So two-fifths of the full spool was 40 inches long. We're going to write this out just like that uh, previous problem. Two-fifths of the full spool. Well, that's the unknown because they're asking how many inches are on the full spool, so I'll make that x. Two-fifths times x, two-fifths of x, that was the 40 inches that he used. Now, we want to get x alone and we have to undo this being multiplied by two-fifths. When I work with fractions in, in algebra like this, I like to do them in a two-step way. It makes a little more sense to me. I get rid of the bottom number by multiplying by something and then I get rid of the top number by dividing by something. You could think of it like this. Let's multiply both sides by five first and those fives will cancel and then I would have 2x equals 80. Whoops, 2x equals 200. And then I can divide by 2 because that 2 is multiplied by the x. Those cancels. I have to divide this by 2 as well. And x equals 100. Another way to think about that, if we go back to our original equation, 2 fifths x equals 40, is that you can multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this fraction. So just take that fraction and flip it upside down. That would do the same thing in one step. So since this was 2 fifths, I multiply it by 5 halves. The 5's cancel, the 2's cancel, you just get x. And then be 40 times 5 divided by 2, that's going to be 100. Let's do a slightly harder one. This one says Valerie used 5 sixths of a full spool of leather lacing for her project. There were 45 inches of leather lacing left on the spool 
when she was done. Okay, this is a little bit different. They're not telling us how much she used, they're telling us how much was left. How many inches of leather lacing were on the full spool? They still want to know what the full spool is. So five-sixth, oh, I see. So what that means is that if there are 45 inches left, that's the part of the fraction she didn't take. That would be the one-sixth that's left on the spool. Because a full spool would be like one, and one minus five-sixth would be one-sixth. So this would be one-sixth of the full spool, so one-sixth times x is 45 inches. And then we go about solving for x just like we did with the other problems. In this case, uh, we need to multiply by six to get rid of the one-sixth here. Multiply both sides by six. Those sixes cancel. We get just x over here. And 45 times 6 is 270 inches.